and I was very uh, not happy with the scheduling of this talk because of two reasons. First being the day, the last day I was expecting most of the people will leave anyway. And also because it is competing with two committers, Peter E and Heike. I was like, oh, who is going to be here? <laughs> But I really thank you all for being present in this talk, and I hope it will be worth your time. So I am Rafia Sabi, and I'm working with Cybertech. And today we'll learn about the Postgres Executor. So this is also another interesting thing that I learned while preparing this presentation is that you will see a lot many talks on the optimizer part. And I like say, yes, it is more interesting, but like what happens then? Nobody really talks about it. Those hard, ugly, dirty parts. <laughs> so we'll see that today. So before I delve into the executor, let's talk a little bit about my employer, who is kind enough to also sponsor this um, whole conference. So it's like a good team of people who are from different parts of the world and present in different parts of the world. They have a lot of services, trainings, and support for you. and. It's quite old at the time. So it's all like good people working on good problems. So apart from services, they also have a set of tools and products that can help your day-to-day -day life. Yeah, that's enough about them. And if you're more interested, you can check out their booth. There are some interesting products to have a look and yeah, you can go ahead from there. Coming back to the talk. So here I'll explain the general flow of the executor, how different things are like, um, what is the sequence of steps and the important data structures and functions that are uh, important here. And some of the peripheral items like which are not actually part of the executor, but without understanding them, you will not be able to really comprehend the executor module in itself. So I've included some of them in like broad level uh, detail. So the intention of this presentation is that if after looking at this, you want to know like which function is important for this particular aspect or how I want to see that how this particular scan is working, hopefully after this, you will know the right functions, the right data structures, when one is used, how it is used, etc. So we'll see the overview of the this module setup of PostgreSQL. So as soon as a connection is established, a query is sent from the server to the client, the first step is parsing. So at this stage, it's just SQL syntax checking. So there is grammar files, and it just checks for the syntax if everything is right, there's no spelling mistakes, there's no you know, whatever required is missing or etc. But there is no real catalog lookups at this stage. So you will not really know if like you are using the wrong column name and etc. at this point in time. Then is the rewriting module. So PostgreSQL has this uh, some set of rules based on which it rewrites the given query to make it better for optimization and of course to execute it like more efficiently later on. For example, uh, like one very common example is if there are views in the query, so it will rewrite it as like you can, uh, like selecting it from the actual underlying table. So these are some of the rules and there are some other things also that are being re used to rewrite this query. Once that part is done, then it goes to the planning. And this is like, as I did, like most of the, like might be having a little bit idea about this uh, part and that is, we know that SQL is a non-declarative language. So we just say, I want to know who is earning like highest amount in this room. I, I, I am not telling to you know scan this particular table by sequence or index or bitmap. Similarly, like if I want to join two tables, I'll not be dictating as a part of SQL query that which join should be better. So all these decisions are made by planner. So it will like compare different strategies, see which is better. And for that, PostgreSQL uses a cost model, which is an abstraction of time in some senses. So it will keep on like iterating with different scan, different joints, what should be sort, where it should aggregate and things like that, and will come up with a plan tree, which is like the most efficient in terms of cost. And finally, when this is ready, we it will be given to the execution. Okay. So we will see how the execution works now. So the most important function in this aspect is exec simple query. So if you want to 
like have a complete look of how the executor works, this is a function to have a breakpoint upon. Exec simple query, everything starts from here. So as I have understood the code, there are basically three phases in this execution. First is the preparatory phase that it starts by portal start. So all the important data structures that has to be initialized, all the memory allocation that needs to be done, all those extra things which are required for the final execution are done at the preparatory phase. Then is the actual execution which starts with portal run and the like many functions are called in within that. This is the part where it's like actually going to read to the you know relations, get the tuple, join them, things like that. So this is the actual execution part. And finally, just to clean up and close everything nicely is the drop part where we just clean up the whole like things that we have um, like dirty the buffers and open the relations. So all of that has to be closed. So with that, we came to one important uh, data structure here, which is portals. So basically it's an abstraction for the execution state. It's defined in portal.h file, and it is much more complex than I have mentioned here. I am uh, like, because these are all very detailed, very long data structures. So, but I am mentioning only the very important fields, which is important to understand for the rest of the presentation. So, for example, in this portal, we have this active snapshot. So this is the snapshot that this particular query will be able to use for its further processing. Then there is query descriptor, which is like absolutely available throughout the executor. It will have all the information that executor will ever store or require during the processing of this query. If there are any sub transactions involved in this query, that information is also pre present in portals and portal and then we have like parameters be it internal or external parameters to the query and then there is portal strategy so basically based on if it's a select query it's modify query what type of query it is there are different strategies that has to be used which are like told by a portal strategy so we are in at the present in the preparation phase so we have this portal startup and portal start then further calls executor start and this is the place where one of the executor hooks is available. So if there is any extension which is making any changes to the executor star, for example, there's some extension which requires some more, um, you know, data structures to be um, created or initialized, some memory allocation done differently. So this is the part where that hook will be called and then it will be executed. But after that, We'll come to the meat of this executor start part, which is standard executor start. So the main input this function will take is the query descriptor. So we have this available from the portal, which is now like populated in a uh, query descriptor. So it will like have all this information that we will require further in the execution. So we'll have a brief look at what this looks like. Again, this is much larger than the five fields that I have mentioned here. And it is defined in the file exec disk. So I'm just mentioning these things so that it will be easier for you to look up later on. So as I mentioned, it's like the absolutely everything that the query will need throughout the processing. So it will also have this snapshot from the portal. It will have this thing called a executor state, which is summarized as e state and plan state. So executor state is basically a data structure which will have like different information related to executor at the moment. So it's kind of like the sketch thing that you're executing and writing different stuff to it. So it's that type of thing. And then plan state, it's basically a pointer to the actual plan tree that was created for this thing. So the way PostgreSQL has like this infrastructure developed, it's like the query plan that you get after the optimization, you can cache it, you can reuse it, you can do multiple stuff. So that is kept absolutely separately. And then we have this execution thing, which is like a different tree. We totally keep it separate because that get dirtied at, at every execution. So it's like, you will not reuse this part of the things. Finally, it also have one interesting thing, uh, total time spent in query execution, but this will only be populated and used if instrumentation is on like something like explain analyze or auto explain something like that. So, before we move further, we'll look at this another important data structure, 
uh, executor state. So it will have, as I said, everything related to, related to this executor invocation at the moment. Some of the very important information it is having is the node tag, which is basically the type of the node that is being currently processed, like aggregate or sort or scan or join, whatever be it. And then if it's a scan thing, then like a scan direction, forward, backward, it will also have the information of the all the range tables involved in the query, all the index relations, all the other relations in the query, parameter information, like if they are external, internal, because they has to be handled and allocated differently. Then the memory context that is being used at the moment and like the pointer to it. And finally, if it is a parallel query, then uh, it uses a special structure which is called dynamic shared area. So a pointer to that and information about that is also present in executor state. So now in this executor state we are, and the first thing that we do is create this E state, populated with all the information that is required. We also at this moment switch to a memory context, which is per query memory context. So we uh, this is uh, one of the peripheral thing that I was talking about that it will be not easy to understand executor without an understanding of memory context. So this is, I will have, I'll cover it later part of the uh, presentation. So at the moment you can just understand that every memory allocation that is being done in Postgres is not by simple malloc malloc thing, but rather via memory context. It's much cleaner, it's a great concept in my opinion, and it's, it simplifies a lot of things. So then finally we call init plan. So init plan is a function which is responsible for ca uh, calling the respective init uh, function for that particular node. So if it is a scan node, we will call the like respective init for the scan. So every node has a different data structures that are to be used. Like for example, scan will use totally different things than a join should use, right? So each of these nodes have their own init functions, which like create their own structures, they create like allocate memory differently. So all of that is done in, as part of exit in a node. And then we come to this execution phase, which is like really things are running and happening in this phase. So this starts with the portal run, which subsequently calls executor run. And again, if there is any hooks, the function that are here, so executor run on executor run, so they are called here. But otherwise we proceed with execute plan, which calls exec proc node. So from now on, exit proc node is the most important function to know. And you will see if you'll debug any time, any query, you will see it being called multiple times. So basically what it does is that it actually processes the node. So whatever is the node, if it is a scanning, it like keeps on calling that scan function for that tuple till, till every tuple that is to be scanned is scanned. If it is a join uh, nodes and it will like keep on calling the join nodes for the, you know, performing that join until like the join is complete. So it is being repeatedly called till there is nothing to do more. So I know it's like hard to understand why I'm just, you know, words. So I thought maybe it will be better if I explain it by some examples, but how this all nodes and how this all sequence works really. So I have taken this a small example of uh, a select query. So basically it's aggregating on a whole of the table, it's sequence scan on the rest of the table, and then you just aggregate it. So how its sequence will look like. So first we'll call with exec proc node. I mean, all the other things that I told, a portal run, star, of course, that are being called, but this is like the most interesting part. And this is the part where things change based on the nodes. Before that, like everything is same for everything. So once exec proc node is called, it calls exec aggregate. So this is an intelligent function. It understands like if I have to perform uh, aggregate on a group, I have to perform aggregate on like whole of the uh, like table. So it will have the information about that. And also it will know that it can have to perform aggregate on the like receiving a result node from the, uh, the sub plan below it. So at this instant when it is called, it will know that there is no tuple at the moment, so we have to scan and the, the tuple. So uh, it is uh, it calls fetch input tuple function, which subsequently calls exec scan. So one more thing I want to point here with respect to these slides is that 
this is just a sequence of steps and I am just mentioning the most important functions here because many a times there are many smaller functions like for example here fetch input tuple that are being called in between and they are calling other functions so exec proc nodes calls ex like for example here if I say exec aggregate uh, is the first step and then the exec scan is the second it doesn't mean exec aggregate is calling directly exec scan it just means that after exec aggregate you call exec scan so one has to just keep in mind that and don't don't take this flow as like the real flow but it's like the step number is right one is to exec proc node second is exec aggregate and things like that so anyway fetch input tuple is being called and then it um, uh, calls exec scan which then finally calls exec scan fetch which is responsible for actually going into the relation reading that tuple and sending it back to exec scan now when it is received by exec scan if there are any conditions in the query for example here we don't have any condition but if there is a where clause or something that is being like checked in exec scan and if it has to be sent further or not is decided here so this loop now keeps on happening till we have no more tuples to be returned let's go one step further and understand like how a join will work in this regard so in this example we have a hash join and both of these tables are being accessed sequentially so again we'll start with exec proc node and in this case we have the topmost node as exec hash join so it will call exec hash join and exec hash join is an interesting function and a very like if you look at it you will mostly understand all of the hash join on broad aspect so it is being called multiple times at every time it checks like at what stage the code is in and how does it has to behave at this moment so there are switch statements which takes like what is the state at the present for example at the first call it will realize it has no hash table yet so it will call exec hash table create so this is the function which is just responsible for creating the hash table it's an empty hash table just the structure of it then we have to populate this hash table for that we call exec proc node so it's similar to proc node exec proc node but it is special in this regard that it doesn't return individual tuple but it is used in like either if you are creating a bitmap or a hash so those type of structures when you are creating then you call ex multi exec proc node finally it called multi exec hash to actually create that as like a hash structure so it doesn't return like just plain tuples but a different structure called hash state all the tuples are like collected in a way uh, in that hash state node to for further processing finally when you have to actually scan the table you go to the previous set of steps like exec proc node and from there to exec scan and there as we have seen before the fetch one that finally gets the tuple, uh, tuple from the table so this keeps on happening at the first intent, uh, instance you have this hash table created and the second uh, call of exec hash join it realizes now we don't have any outer tuple to join with so then this function will be called so it then further calls exec proc node which i am not mentioning again here so it will just go exec proc node and exec scan and exec scan fetch and finally it will get one outer tuple then based on this tuple it will have to match like which which hash bucket or a skew bucket or what is the batch number that we have to match so that is being done in this exec hash get bucket and batch function and finally when you once you have the bucket you will scan that bucket and join with the outer tuple in this function called exec scan hash bucket so now this thing keeps on happening so at the first instance you created the hash table subsequent to that you just keep on iterating and going through this outer tuple keep on getting it scanning the batch and creating the join tuple and sending it this keeps on happening till you don't have any tuple left so that's how a join is executed now let's change the flavor of the things and see how um insert um, a statement is executed so as we can see it plan wise it's not much to say just a result node and insert on the table so again we'll start with exec proc node here now this node is called exec modify table so modify could be anything like 
update, delete, insert. In this case, we'll particularly call exec init insert projection. So the way the PostgreSQL tuples are constructed, it's like there are these values that a user can see which you input and you which you use, but there are other set of values in the tuple which is not directly intended to be used by users, but it is for like catalog purposes, recovery purposes, or some extra like internal purposes like CTID, XID, some things like that. Those we call as junk attributes. So at this place, we filter out if there is any junk attribute, how do we have to manipulate, what information has to be put. And this is also a good time to actually check that what we are inserting is actually matching with the table structure itself. So if there is any mismatch there, this is the place where that error will be reported. So next interesting thing is the table slot. So uh, in PostgreSQL, we have this structure called tuple slot. So every tuple is like saved and like, like dealt as a tuple slot. So we have to create that slot here. So table slot create just does that part. And then finally, we are in exec insert which is responsible for inserting the tuple into the relation and if there are any associated indexes that is to be um, updated, that is also done here. So it's like when I say exec insert does it, it's not, it doesn't mean directly that it will do it, but it will call some functions and they will subsequently do it. So for example, here, there is one extra function that is being called, which is of interest is exec materialize slot. So basically it creates a local copy of that slot that we have created for that tuple. So that when we push to disk, it's like a separate copy and it's done and we don't have anything to worry. Finally, the actual insertion happens in, uh, is in table tuple insert. So uh, once this table tuple insert is called, it actually goes and calls based on the access methods that this table or index is using and its respective insert function. So that is being uh, uh, done here. And once that is done, it is part of that access method um, function itself to create an appropriate X log and insert it at the right places. So that all is done via call to this function. Moving to parallel query. So parallel query is a bit interesting and a bit more complicated. It First of all, it uses a couple of more data structures than we have so far seen in this. One of them is uh, dynamic shared memory. So this is the area where like memory area, which workers and the master node, uh, master process both are using and sharing information via. Then there is parallel context, which also in some senses connect to the workers with the master. So some of the most important information in this particular data structure is the number of workers launched and the maximum number that was possible and what is the error stack pointed to that in case some error occurred in workers so it can be propagated and also the pointer to the dynamic shared segment. One another interesting uh, data structure here is tuple queue reader. So basically when work uh, in PostgreSQL is because it's process based. So each worker and master, they are both separate processes. So how do they share this information? So for that, we have this structure called tuple queue reader, which is uh, present in shared memory queue. And this is the place where workers keep on writing whatever they are reading, like the tuples, etc., whatever the part of the plan that they are executing and this is also the place where from where the master actually comes and reads the information from so we'll see how that works uh, in this small example so there are just um, two workers and there's a gather node above it and a parallel sequence can use from the table so we'll start here with one step before the exit proc node and that is execute plan because after execute plan we have made the decision if you are going to use parallel mode or not. So this is um, the function enter parallel mode which just checks like if it is um, safe to execute parallel uh, query at this moment. So then we call exec proc node and now the node type is gather so it calls exec gather and in exec gather via calls to different function for example exec init parallel plan and etc. All these special data structures that we talked about are being initialized they are created Finally, in launch parallel workers, it actually makes it like the current process as the master process and spawns whatever is the required number of the processes. 
find in exec parallel create readers we create that tuple queue reader that we talked about that is a place for sharing the tuples and reading from so that is being created and then your master will wait at this function called gather get next so every time uh, a worker writes on shared memory queue that okay a tuple is available then the master will take it further whatever is required as per the plan so this is how it happens on the master but what happens on the worker side so if you are planning to uh, debug a worker parallel query main is the function to know so the the, the easy way that we use for uh, actually debugging uh, parallel queries is put a sleep statement in this like a conditional sleep statement in this function so that as soon as the parallel worker is is spawned it waits here and then you can put like attach to your debugger and like start from there so this is the main uh, starting point of parallel query and as you can see it is like totally as a different process it starts from executor start it's not starting with exec proc node because it's a totally different process but this is where it understands that okay it's a worker process but not like a complete full-fledged process in that sense so then it will uh, call parallel initialize worker and this is the play, uh, place where all this information that worker master has put in the shared segment, like what is the plan state, what is the shared memory, what, what are the other data structures that are to be used, what is the information about the query, query string, etc. It reads from there. And then as per this query, it will understand that, okay, the sequence scan is the part that they have to do. So it will call exec sequence scan initialize worker. So as you can see, the parallel function is different than the usual we cannot call exec sequence scan here we have a special function to be called at the worker side finally this function table begin scan parallel is the place where actual parallel reading by a heap on the heap for example in here it is being done so like whatever is the mechanism of uh, doing it parallelly according to those terms the table is scanned so finally, when all this is done and it keeps on reading the masters, finally, uh, the master finally, when everything is done and there is nothing to wait on gather get next, it will call the shutdown nodes and then it will wait for the workers before actually, you know, destroying the things, uh, all the different data structures, so all the extra memory allocation that is not the part of normal execution is being done via these like shutdown and uh, like finish all these extra functions are being called and you are done with the parallel query so apart from these like general um, execution another interesting thing that executor does is expression evaluation so it's a little bit different that's why i'm covering it uh, differently so what are expressions you can like often find it in target list and where clause group by clauses but Unlike the rest of the execution state, which is like a tree form, expression evaluation is done in a linear form. So it's like till plan, there was a tree. But as soon as we come to executor, it is converted to one node, which is of the type expression state. And it just contains an array of different uh, things. So for example, it will have different steps. What are the steps to be evaluated in order to, uh, in order to evaluate this function? What are the different functions to be used to actually evaluate this? And finally, the pointer to the expression tree from the plan tree itself. So a little, like I give a brief description of expression evaluation step, how that data structure looks. So internally, it's just identified by different opcodes that for every operation, like what is the opcode for it? So it will just apply that. And the place for like storing the resultant value and also it is written in a very, I would say, compiler efficient way, this part of the code. So uh, based on different uh, instruction, if it is Boolean, if it is like comparison or whatever it is, there are different inline structures, which uh, I think is are like more uh, efficient as per execution. So how this works is once you call exec in an expression, so it will convert that expression node to expression state. So if anything that is possible to pre-compute at this state, it will be 
done for example if they are just like you are giving expression four plus two so now it knows like okay this is a constant and the opcode for addition is this and the other is also constant so it will just execute that and will store it in the place so and as i mentioned that each of these uh, elements of the array is of type expression evaluation steps so basically this is a whole uh, non-recursive thing it's a linear uh, in, it happens in a linear fashion so it's much more efficient and it is done lately actually so like every other function uh, every other node that we discussed there was like an end ex end of that like exec end or scan exec end or something but for expression the way it is written it's like you don't need it everything is done in that memory context and as soon as you reset this everything is gone so you don't need any further step to clean up so finally we come to this um, last phase of the execution which is the cleanup phase so we'll call executor n which will subsequently call the end for that node and basic responsibility of, of each of these functions is to free anything any structure anything that they have actually allocated as part of this node has to be freed if there is any uh, like buffer pins or anything that has to be taken it has to be unpinned if there are any open relations that were um, used uh, during this execution that has to be properly closed so all that is done here so just to like if somebody is interested in to understand like where all this code lies this is a brief uh, way to look at it is like an executor uh, subdirectory you can see for every node there is a designated file which makes it very easy to understand like which file you will find what for example for scans we have exec scan for joins we have exec hash join exec merge whatever and simply uh, and uh, similarly like exec sort exec ag so in there you will find for each of these nodes what are the init functions, what are the different data structures that they are using, what are the memory contexts, if they are changing any, creating anything, you will learn there. And how the actual execution is happening, what are the different things happening in that, those are also in these files in itself. And finally, what you have to do to end. So if you are interested in creating one more node so this is how you can do it and this is how you can look through it so let's come to this peripheral um, part of the executor which is memory management this is not really part of executor but basically it is like how the memory management is done in postgres sql but it is heavily used in execution so you will often see the functions related to it and it will be like not very intuitive if you have no idea before that that like what is this memory context so basically as i mentioned before that memory context is a special data structure that is being used for memory allocation throughout postgres so the speciality with this data structure is that it's kind of a forest so um, not kind actually it is a forest so every uh, memory context can have multiple children but only one parent and the dependency among them is such that if you um, reset or delete any memory context, then all the children will be subsequently deleted or reset. So the basic operations that you do here is like con you can create a context, you can allocate memory, you can resize them, you can delete, reset, you can also inquire at any moment, like what is the um, uh, memory allocated to this and at every part of execution you have this global variable available which tells you what is the current memory context to be using so it's very helpful when you're writing some related code and you want to understand if you are in the right memory context to do these things so what do i mean by the right memory context so every memory context has some life and some kind of expectations from it some of the most important memory contexts that we need to understand are top memory contexts. So this is absolutely no touch place. So it's like it always lives, it never resets, it never deletes. So there is no point actually allocating anything unless you want to live uh, it to live forever. So it's it has to be used with a lot of care. The other thing is postmaster context. So for every postmaster, there is this context in which everything related to that is being used. 
um then we have cash memory context so all this well cash buff cash all these allocations are done as per in this context so anything you are doing if doing uh, with respect to caches you need to be in the right context then we have a couple of important transaction related contexts like top transaction so basically it is the top transaction so it lives till the top transaction lives so it's also not a very good idea to uh, allocate much things here because like unless it is not required by absolutely top transaction otherwise current transaction context is an interesting context and like you can use that if you just want to do something in the current transaction finally there is error context which lives pretty much uh, a long time and it is to carry like whatever error information is there but it is just not resetted as soon as some error occurred but rather like when you have commit or rollback then you will have actually resetting of error context with respect to um, executor most of the processing is done either in per query memory context or per tuple con uh, memory context to avoid any memory leaks so this is an important point to know and this context is created in create executor state in the function that we have discussed before so finally to just brief out all of the things so the first we create the most important data structure which is create query descriptor where it has all the information related to this and then we start the executor we create the executor state which is the e state and there we also create per query context so that rest of the allocation is done there so uh, now i think it will be easier to understand that when we are creating this context and when we are now saying that okay now we'll evaluate the expression we'll allocate memory for it or etc so now we know it is in a per query context as soon as this query will end and this context will be reset all of those things are gone so it's very clean uh, you know closure so if there is any trigger that is, and that is like done at the at beginning of the uh, to be called at the beginning of the query it is called after this uh, in as part of this executor's uh, start and then we call the init node as we discussed and if there is expression context that has to be created for the expression evaluation we create that and then we initialize the respective data structure finally we go to the actual execution part and we'll call the executor run which calls the most important function exec proc node which recursively calls in this per query context all of these respective functions we evaluate any expression uh, required we reset the expression context that we previously created finally there is this um, mildly important executor uh, fun finish function that is used and it is basically important for uh, modify table queries in some cases it's like um, you need an extra uh, iteration for them to run to finally complete so uh, i mean that's something specific to that and finally you have any end trigger that is to be called they are taken care of, and finally you just end the executor node by releasing the respective resources freeing the structures unpinning the buffers closing the relations and finally freeing the query descriptor uh, structure so that's all from me thank you any questions at which points of the execution can the query be cancelled and how is this done? Uh, sorry? Uh, at which points during that execution can the query be cancelled and how is it done? I didn't get the part. Cancel. Cancel a query. Interrupt. Cancel a query. Um, like, as a user, you want to interrupt a cancel query? yeah so at like at whatever point you are actually there is a being called to a signal interrupt function that is being called at different stages so at any time you give control c and it goes to that um, interrupt it gets that interrupt it will just you know um, error uh, it will just come out of everything and will clear all this it will just call this executor end at that moment i think and there's some cleanup function that is called after for that
Thank you. Uh, fantastic talk. Thank Enjoyed you. it very much. What happens when the same query is executed again, either in the same session or a different session? Yeah. Will it do all the planning and everything from the start or can it reuse some parts? Uh, so with respect to planning, plan can be cached. That depends on like uh, the different aspects. So plan, if the plan remains same, that planning time can be saved a little bit. But with respect to execution, everything happens again. That's why I mentioned this executor state thing. It's kind of like a sketch board thing that you are writing as you are executing. So as soon as this query ends, everything from there is like finished. So you will create another executor state, everything else. But what helps in this subsequent, subsequent calling is just the presence of the tuples and whatever data in the buffer itself. So, I mean, that's kind of an improvement, but otherwise, executor-wise, every, every data structure is again created. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Rafia, for an excellent session.